Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we have our Austin Healy in the shop. Uh, I went to get it out of storage to take it for a drive. Clutch pedal went straight to the floor, which is exactly what you want for sporty driving. Really helps shifting gears if you like that you know, good old-fashioned crunching sound. Anyway, uh, what we are going to do is kind of go through why, uh, how to diagnose it. So if you're having clutch problems with your Healy, um, or actually your Triumph, your MG, pretty much anything. If you're having clutch problems, we're going to walk you through what to do if your clutch pedal is going to the floor. Now, the first place you're going to want to look is under the hood. Grab a flashlight and check the fluid level. In our case, it is empty. Very, very empty. And so that's a problem, uh, especially in these big Heelys where it shares a reservoir between the clutch fluid and the brake fluid. So you want to make sure that there's something in there. But fortunately, it's a clutch that went out, not the brakes. And first thing that you want to check uh, on a Healy, it's kind of buried under here, but you've got the, the brake master cylinder and the clutch master, um, obviously just positioned by their respective pedals. You want to look and see, is there fluid coming out of one of those? And in our case, no, kind of follow the lines, make sure nothing looks you know, badly corroded. There's the line kind of going around. That's going to go to the clutch master, uh, sorry, the clutch slave. And then you've got this line here on a Healy. Now it's, it's a remote uh, fluid reservoir. So you've got the master cylinders for the brake and the clutch. They're incidentally identical goes over to the reservoir on the front and then you're going to have another line that goes to the rest of the system. So in the case of the brake cylinder it's going to go down to the bottom of the car and the clutch it's going to wind around here and head to the slave cylinder there. I don't see any leaks here. Also take a quick look inside the car because if the, if the cylinder itself is leaking, the master cylinder itself is leaking, uh, it could be draining into the car, which would be kind of unfortunate, but it can happen. Uh, sometimes the seal will fail there and it's going to leak down the pedal onto the floor. So uh, if the floor looks clean, the master cylinder looks okay, um, and your fluid is low, it's probably the slave cylinder that's at fault. Uh, just kind of a side note while you're up here, if the fluid is full and you're still not getting any movement on the clutch, uh, it could be that your master cylinder is, is junk, it could be the slave cylinder is junk, it could be something inside the bell housing is junk, uh, but the very first thing that you should try to do is bleed it. And we're going to need to do that anyway because I'm, I'm pretty confident it's the slave cylinder on this, uh, so I'm going to have to show you that anyway, but just something to bear in mind. So uh, we look good up top, let's go underneath the car. All right, so from underneath the vehicle here, we've got our clutch slave cylinder. You can already see fluid there, fluids leaking out the back, uh, generally a mess. Um, this is brake fluid, by the way, so if it is leaking, try not to get it on any paint or clean it up immediately. Um, I actually like silicone fluid when I'm, when I'm working on my cars um, because it won't eat the paint. Anyway, uh, what we're going to do, I'll just tell you about it first. We've got to disconnect it here and you want to do that before you loosen anything because otherwise you're going to have a hell of a time trying to loosen that bolt. Um, we're going to disconnect this cotter pin. This is what the clutch slave cylinder pushes on, so that's the, the rod and, and linkage in there that actuates the clutch. And then there's a couple of bolts, uh, one here, one on the opposite side, and it basically just comes out. So let's get to it. Now on an Austin Healey, all of these should be standard, but this is an aftermarket pipe and my metric wrench happens to fit better. I like these style of wrenches for pipe fittings because you stand a lower chance of damaging something as you're taking it apart. So stock is not going to be metric, but in our case, that's what we've got. Once you get it a little bit loose, it might be easier to use just a regular open-ended wrench. 
slips on a little bit easier. You probably see the copper washer. Make sure you don't lose that. Technically, you should replace it when you do this. Just kind of get that out of the way there. And we will definitely be replacing this cotter pin. Wasn't even put in correctly. Make sure you've got something beneath to capture the fluid as it's coming out. It's going to be a similar job on pretty much any British car. A TR6, the uh, slave cylinders on this side of the gearbox, but basically the same idea. Side note, if you're putting in a slave cylinder on a TR6, the rod here should be going in the center hole. Now let's see if I could fit this in. Disconnect the battery on these two. That's a random bolt that didn't belong there. That's fun. Not much room in here. already planning ahead here when I go to put the other one in you definitely want to get the top bolt in first or at least started There we have it. Here's the, the actuator rod that comes out of it. You want to make sure that it's not, generally speaking anyway, you want to make sure that it's clean, that it's not elongated, nothing's broken in here. And then on your new one, it's going to fit in just like so. There's a bleeder screw on the top. The rod's going to go on the end, just like before, and then obviously right here is where your tube goes in. It would be a wise idea to make sure the bleeder screw is loose before you start this. Oh, 
one other thing is on the bolts you have your lock washers make sure you throw those out and replace them with new ones you should always use new lock washers and right away I could see we're gonna have a problem here because this bolt ain't gonna play nicely so okay I get this out of the way just in case this happens to you the new slave cylinder is ever so slightly longer than the old one that's not really a problem except that it's hitting this nut so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this nut and bolt out and flip it around the other way usually and I don't know if it's if it really matters but usually I, I like to have the nut on the rear of the car so that if for some reason it loosens up and falls out you still have the bolt going through to kind of locate everything but technically it shouldn't really matter so I'm gonna take this out flip it around uh, because the bolt head is uh, narrower than that nut is If you're just taking out the one, it's not a big deal. Transmission's not going to drop. Just make sure that you put this ground strap back. If you happen to know for concourse purposes, sorry, concour purposes, which direction the bolts should be facing, let me know in the comments below. And then again, a piece that doesn't really matter, but you should generally strive for it, is if you're using a ratchet, like I've got this ratcheting wrench here, generally try and ratchet on the nut side, not the bolt side. It's especially true if you're torquing something down. And if there is a torque spec on here, make sure that you're consulting your shop manual and torquing your bolts appropriately. Now we should have a little bit more room. And always, of course, make sure that you're threading this in by hand, a couple of threads first. Because you don't want to cross thread it. Seriously, good luck getting a tap in there if you do that. Before it gets too tight, make sure you get the next bolt in. And snug is just fine with the lock washers on there, the bolts aren't going to come out. So don't over tighten it because you'll strip the aluminum. The only trick to this is patience and maybe a pair of pliers.
Okay, and then the only other thing is get a new copper washer, make sure your mating surfaces are clean. And reconnect. not twisting this very strongly. It's, it's kind of stuck onto the pipe. And so I'm very gently twisting it and kind of rattling it a little bit. I want to make sure it goes in straight without cross-threading it. And it seems like I've got it now. You should always try and do that with your fingers instead of a tool if you can. In my case, I was not able to. And once you get it close, snug it down using your appropriately sized wrench. All right. Now to bleed it, because you've loosened it, you already know what size wrench to use. Mine's a 3 8 yours might not be. So if you've done it correctly and loosened it, good. If you haven't, uh, and this is gonna be a little bit of a bear, but you wanna get your wrench up onto the bleed screw so that you can open and close it. I'm going to do this myself. There's a, a a lot of one-man bleeding tools that, that are out there. You can go ahead and use that. Uh, it's generally pretty good on a clutch. Uh, otherwise, what you're going to do is you're going to close the bleeder. You're going to fill the fluid, have somebody step on the clutch a few times until they get kind of a stiffer pedal, if, if they can anyway. Um, may not be able to for the first few tries. Anyway, have somebody step on the pedal, open the bleeder, it's going to spray out the brake fluid. So it's helpful if you've got a clear tube uh, have it so you can drain it into something. Um, then you're going to close the bleeder again, have them release the pedal, step on it, open the bleeder. Fluid will start to come out. You're going to see air bubbles. Close the bleeder, have them release the pedal. What you're basically doing is they're forcing fluid forward and then you're closing the bleeder so that when they let off on that pedal, it's not sucking the air back through the line. Uh, it's instead sucking the fluid from the master cylinder and forcing it down this tube here, okay? And then you open it again when they step on the pedal so that you can force the fluid to go through the system along with all the air bubbles. That's really what you're trying to do with bleeding. So that's enough of that, but let me, let me show you the single person bleeder that I've got. It is as simple as this. There is a, just a little thing that fits in the top of the bleeder, a tube that you can see through and this has a one-way check valve, which means fluid will go through one way, but not the other. And so what we're gonna do is just set this on the top of the bleed screw and press it down, assuming we can get it to fit anyway. Which also depends on my fingers fitting. And that'll actually just kind of hang there. We're gonna go fill the master cylinder with fluid, and then I'm gonna get up on a ladder and step on the pedal a few times. Okay, with the clutch bled, you want to take a final look and make sure that you've topped everything off. Double check for leaks, of course. There should not be any. Once you're satisfied with that, put the cap back. 
And of course, get in the car and step on the pedal. Perfect. So that's it. We've now got a drivable Austin Healey once again, and we're on to the next project. So if you guys have any questions, please don't hesitate to put them in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Happy motoring.